Okay, Algebra 1 students, in this video we will be studying how to add and subtract positive and negative numbers. Now before I go any further, I want to say this. I know you've had this before, but I want to teach this today in a way that's probably unique. And I want you to listen to me and really try the methods I'm going to show you. Because I really believe it helps adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers. I really feel that my idea here and how I'm going to teach this really makes the material a lot easier, okay? Your heading for today is combining signed numbers. Combining signed numbers, we are putting lessons 2.2 and 2.3 together. So we're covering two lessons today. Please copy down your heading if you would. Combining signed numbers, lessons 2.2 and 2.3. And be sure and include today's date so that your notes are organized. All right, here we go. Let me start off by saying that this is one of the most important lessons we will cover in this course. Every year, students, whether it's pre-calculus, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Geometry, they make mistakes when it comes to combining signed numbers. Now, when I say signed numbers, that's the same thing as saying positive and negative numbers. Okay? <coughs> so, please pay close attention to what I'm going to teach you today. I will teach it well, and it is easy to understand. This is not difficult material. It is easy material, okay? But you must learn. My, my pen's kind of freezing up here, guys. Sorry about that. There we go. But you must learn this material so that you can combine positive and negative numbers accurately, okay? Now notice, up here in the first sentence, I use the words add and subtract. Ever since I said that, I have not used those words again. I've used the words combine. Now there's a reason for that. From now on, I would like to ask you to no longer look at pluses and minuses as pluses and minuses, okay? So, from now on, we are always going to look at these two symbols as positives and negatives, not as pluses and minuses, okay? That's really, really important. For example, from now on, when I see something like this, I am not going to say 4 minus 2. From now on, I'm going to say positive 4 because, look, if there's no sign here with a 4, then we know it's understood to be positive. So I would read this expression as positive 4 and negative 2. Positive 4 and negative 2. And of course that would equal a positive 2. I'm also going to ask you to look at positive and negative numbers like they are referring to money. Now I know that sounds a little weird and confusing, but if you will trust me and listen to me, you're going to understand this material with no problem at all, okay? You're going to have to trust what I'm, um, and do what I'm about to teach you. It will be very helpful, okay? So here we go. Please take some great notes and please pay close attention. I'm not going to give you steps on how to evaluate these problems. I am just going to work a lot of these out for you and let the repetition do its work. Excuse me. <coughs> okay, so here we go. I would like you to copy down this first problem and just listen to me talk, please. Okay? Alright, here we go. We have a negative 2 and a positive 5. Now, you could write this either way. You can put the positive 5 first if you wanted to. And the negative 2 second, it doesn't matter. So we have negative 2 and positive 5, or you can say we have positive 5 and negative 2. Now look at this like it's money. Negative means you owe me money. Positive is how much money you have, okay? So here we go. You owe me $2. You have $5 in your pocket. So you pay off your $2 debt, and how much do you have left over? 3. Do you owe me 3? No, it's a positive 3. You have $3 left over. Negatives are going to refer to the money you owe. Positive numbers are going to refer to the number that you actually have in your pocket. You get the same answer over here. You have a positive 5, so you have $5 in your wallet. You owe me $2, so you pay off your debt and you're left with $3 to the good. So negative 2, positive 5, 
5 is 3. Positive 5 and negative 2 is 3. We call that combining numbers. Not multiplying, not dividing, combining. And that's how we're going to do these. Let's try another one. <clears throat> now this one's a little different, okay? You're going to have to take some side notes off to the side. Here I have a double sign. So I have a positive 2 and a positive negative 6. Okay, I have a positive 2 and a positive negative 6. So here's what we're going to do. You never want a number to have two signs. You might want to write that in your notes. You never want a number to have two signs. You never want a number to have two signs. Now, this 2 right here has one sign. It's a positive. But this 6 has two signs. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to simplify this down to one sign. So students, listen carefully. It's so, so easy. Whenever the two signs are different, then that gives you one negative sign. Whenever these two signs are the same, that gives you one sign that is positive. I would copy that in your notes if I were you. All right. Let me copy this so I can pull that up again later if I need to. Let me say that again. If your two signs are different, then they condense down to one negative sign. If the two signs are the same, then they condense down to one positive sign. So, I have a positive 2. Are my two signs here with the 6, are they the same? Are they different? Well, they're different, aren't they? One's positive, one's negative. When the signs are different, that condenses down to one negative sign. So there you go. That's simple. I don't care if it would have been a negative here and a positive here. If the signs are different, the two signs condense down to a negative sign. Always. Okay. Now, if the two signs would have been the same, like two negatives, then they condense down to a positive sign. We'll get to something like that later down, later on down here. So let's start over. I looked at my original problem. I saw that I had two signs, so I condensed it down to one sign. Now look, you have two dollars in your wallet. You owe me six dollars, okay? Well, you're gonna pay off two dollars. Have you paid off your debt, or do you still owe me more money? Well, obviously you still owe me more money. How much do you owe me still? Four dollars, negative four. Okay. This problem also could have been written like this. If you want to put the positive negative six first and then the positive two second, it doesn't matter. Condense these two signs down, you get a negative six because the signs are different. Bring down your positive two. You owe me six dollars. You have two dollars in your wallet, so you pay off two dollars. You still owe me negative 4. So positive 2 and positive negative 6 equals negative 4. Alright. Okay, let's try this again. Let's try another problem. <clears throat> Alright, let's take a look at this problem. Now, remember, you never want to have a number with two signs. So, notice first of all that um, Notice, first of all, 3 has one sign. That's good. 5 has one sign, but look at your 6. Your 6 has two signs, a positive and a negative. So, whenever the signs are different, positive and negative, you condense them down to one negative. So I have a negative 3, a positive 5, and a negative 6. Now, here's what I think you should do next, okay? <clears throat> You're welcome to do this. You're welcome to look at these two numbers right here and combine those. That's fine. You owe me $3. You have $5 in your wallet. Pay off your debt, and you're still left with positive $2. Bring down your negative 6. You have $2 in your wallet. You owe me 6. Pay off your debt. You're left with negative 4. That's a fine way to do it, but there is a faster way. 
when you get down to more than two numbers like this, I would recommend that you first of all add up all of your debt and add up all the money in your wallet and then go from there. For example, I, I owe $3 and I owe $6, right? Negative 3, negative 6. So now I owe negative 9. Bring down your positive 5. That's faster to me. And then combine these two numbers. I owe you, not, you owe me $9. You have $5 in your wallet. You pay off part of your debt. You still owe me negative 4. Let me show it to you this way. Okay, watch this, please. Let's pretend I had a really long string of numbers. Please copy this in your notes. Negative 5, negative 10, positive 8. Um, uh, negative 13, positive 11, positive 2, minus 9. Now, if you do this problem two numbers at a time, it's going to take you a long time. Watch this. I owe you, you owe me 5, you owe me 10, now you owe me 15. My pen is really messing up. I apologize. And then bring all of your numbers down. But it's going to take a while. That's the 11 right there. Positive 2, negative 9. Now combine these two numbers. You owe me 15. You pay off 8. You still owe me 7. Then bring down all of your numbers. This is going to take a while. Now you owe me 7. You owe me 13. So now you owe me 20. So on and so forth. But there's a faster way to do this. At the very beginning, go through and add up all of your debt. 5, 10, 13, and 9. That's 15, 28, 37. So there's all my debt, $37. Let me check my work. 22, 32. That's right. Now, let's go through and add up all of my uh, money I have in my wallet. Um, or all the money you have in your wallet. You have $8 in your wallet. Plus 11 more. Plus 2. That's 21. Isn't that fast? I added up all of my negative numbers. I added up all of my positive numbers. And now I can simply do this. You owe me $37, but you only have 21, so you pay off as much as you can, and you still owe me how much? $16. And so I think when you get to long strings of numbers, it's easier to add up all of your negatives and get one negative number. Add up all of your, I said add, I should say combine. Combine all of your negative numbers, combine all of your positive numbers, and then finish the problem. We'll try some more like that, okay? Now copy this in your notes. You can work ahead or watch me. Here we go. <clears throat> okay, first of all, we're going to combine some numbers. But I, first of all, I know my 14 has one sign. My 31 has one side, however, sign. However, my 26 has two signs. Now notice they're positive, positive. Whenever the signs are the same, the two signs condense down to a positive sign. So I bring down my positive 14. These two signs become a positive. And I bring down my positive 31. Now, add up or combine. Combine all of your negative numbers. There are none. Combine all of your positive numbers. And you will get uh, 71, I believe. Uh, let's see, 47, 47, might be 61, uh, 757, 71. So we combine all of our positive numbers, and that's it. If you want to put a positive sign, you can. You don't have to. There's your answer. Positive 71. So there were no negatives. That's pretty easy. Okay, no problem. All right, moving on to the next number. Negative 4, negative 3. All right, now... I don't have to worry about using this right here because I don't have any double signs. Four has one sign, three has one sign, so I'm ready to get started. Um, you owe me four. You owe me four dollars, and you owe me three more dollars. You don't have any money to pay me, so now you owe me how much? And we're finished. That's pretty easy, guys. Some students see a negative, negative, they think positive right away. No, no, no. We're combining numbers. We're combining. Trust me, look at your signed numbers or your positive and negative numbers like they're money. Okay? Negative, you owe me money. Negative, you owe me money. So now you owe me $7. Okay? All right, let's try another one. Positive 10, negative 11. Here we go. Once again, I do not have any double signs. This 10 has one sign. This 11 has one sign. Okay? 
So here we go. Um, you have ten dollars in your wallet. You owe me eleven, so you pay off as much as you can, and you still owe me how much? A dollar. If these two numbers were turned around, you'll still get the same answer. If the negative eleven was first, and the positive ten was second, you'll still get the same answer. Uh, you owe me eleven dollars. You have ten dollars in your wallet. You pay off as much as you can. You still owe me negative one. Okay. All right. Let's try another one. Two more, and we're finished. Okay. So not a really difficult lesson today. Pretty simple, like I said it would be. All right. Here we go. Now. <coughs> Okay, I hope this video has been a help. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to.